Hi everyone, it's day four here in Sochi at the Ball Lightning and Cold Nuclear Transmutation Conference. And uh, it was heavy rain today, uh, which cooled things down a bit outside, but uh, I didn't really get outside, so that didn't matter. Uh, mostly I uh, was uh, working on my presentation from about 11 o'clock last night till about 7.30 or 8.15 this morning. Uh, had, had a shower, ate some food and uh, went into the presentation room and uh, I'll try and get that out to you as soon as possible. Uh, I'm looking forward to some sleep tonight. Uh, however, what a day, what a day. But before I get into that, I want to tell you what it's like when you're living in a sanatorium. Uh, you really respect your ability to uh, move and move easily. There are many people here that have suffered uh, from dysplasia or uh, other joint complaints uh, and, and so on. And you know, it makes you really think about the advantages you have just, just being able to move uh, without complaint. Um, so I just wanted, I wanted to say that before I got into uh, about the day. Now, uh, wow, wow, wow. Um, I really like the guys here, so um, uh, I decided to, uh, uh, and also because they're prepared, um, rip out a few uh, concepts from Ode. Uh, and uh, some materials uh, to put the presentation uh, out today. So uh, I've been tearing off bits uh, from Ode for quite some time. Um, uh, anyway, so this is this is a, a nice contextual piece, uh, and I'll publish it uh, the actual uh, presentation and presentation slides as soon as I can get to doing that. Anyway, uh, it would seem to be received very well, uh, and uh, uh, there were several people reference that uh, found some of the things that are referenced in the, in the presentation that are in the community but um, uh, I, I kind of drew upon uh, the lion reactor and uh, what it what it tells us uh, in comparison to four other open researchers work and, uh, and really founded it on that uh, and so it was quite nice to have it well received and uh, uh, I had a very nice chat, um, uh, was invited for a very nice chat um, with uh, Anatoly Klimov, uh, who seems to be doing a lot of the organization here. And uh, at the end of that, he uh, invited me to come to their lab in Moscow and actually demonstrate their COPF-10 reactor. And uh, so uh, I, I said that that's going to take some uh, fundraising and so on. Uh, but uh, anyway... Um, that's that's a real thing. He's producing strange radiation. He's me measuring all kinds of things, uh, and uh, they have all kinds of calorimetry, including putting the entire reactor in in a bucket of water and and, and measuring the heat gain from that based on the input power. So, uh, a wide range of reliable methods for measuring the heat. So, he's quite far down the line. Uh, he considers himself to be uh, a, a, in a race with a brilliant light like, power in terms of actually de delivering a product um, so that that's a very interesting offer uh, and uh, uh, it was it was nice to to have that kind of response to the presentation uh, also um, uh, I've been invited uh, to um, the uh, I think it's Latvia is it no La uh, Lithu Lithuania um, uh, lab of Danaeum uh, as well um, again that's going to take some resources but uh, if we're going to go and uh, understand Danaeum's offering and that lab, uh, that that um, uh, would be a very valuable uh, thing to do, and I, you can trust me to give uh, give full accounting uh, of what I see. Uh, and and the the last thing is on Saturday after the the main part of the conference is over, uh, I've been invited to go uh, and test some samples at uh, the uh, Synthes Tech Lab here in Sochi, uh, where they have a, a, an iron mass spectrometer and a, um, a uh, XRF uh, analysis device, and they have a very competent operator, I've been reliably informed by people who've already been there. And it's very gracious of them. And so I think on Saturday, I'm going to go and test the fra some fragments of the fracture sample and also um, uh, test uh, the um, uh, coral sample from John Hutchison. Those are the samples that I have with me. So it'll be interesting because uh, as far as I'm aware, 
XRF and iron uh, mass spectrometry haven't been conducted on Hutchison samples of that type before. So if we can get those done, it'd be really interesting to see uh, what is in that material. So uh, a really excellent response to what I had to say, um, uh, which has really only been made possible by you guys. And so thank you very much for uh, just, you know, uh, it, it, I was at one point I was talking about how on one of the lion reactors, you may have remembered there was like a fissure running, I don't know how, eight centimeters down the um, uh, quartz uh, uh, sheathing tube. Uh, and it basically gone all the way through. And as it as it went down, it, it was dumping spheres and, and geometric uh, um, structures of what appeared to be different materials uh, all the way down this uh, groove that's cut through the the quartz. And, you know, uh, some people were looking at me a bit half cocked and, and, and uh, thinking, oh, yeah. Um, and uh, it just it, it absolutely blew me away because, uh, 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 what is his name, uh, V.A. Uh, Zhigalov, who's uh, characterizing strange radiation from Alexander Parkamos reactors, he got up and he just... Within a few slides, he was showing a slide where he shows, you know, here's, here's a strange radiation track and, and every so often, every period, it, it's dumping something behind it. Wow. I mean, like confirmation, you know, he didn't know what I was going to say. I mean, I wrote it overnight. Uh, I didn't know what he had in the bag. There'd be no com conversation about what they were going to uh, present other than the, the title and abstract. And wow. What you are witnessing is the genuine birth of a new science and it's just amazing and i feel so privileged that you've made it possible for me to play a part in this story um the the, the people here as i say that they're on another level really uh, uh, in terms of th their ability to be open and and to you know you can come with a new theory and and they won't just go oh they'll they'll actually you know work with the person and 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 discuss it and so on so anyway let me just go over uh uh the day you know uh, i gave my presentation um then uh Zhigilov gave his and uh, absolutely fantastic real great takeaways uh, from that was um and i had a, a, a long discussion with him this evening I, essentially they use a range of detectors, but one of the most novel detectors was just a standard sort of uh, CD, uh, a writable CD. I think the ones maybe that have an aluminium foil, which would be good, um, polycarbonate CDs. Um, and uh, they use those at different distances to statistically work out, you know, where the radiation can extend to. And I think he, I found that it was pretty intense up to about 20 centimeters. And then after 20 centimeters or after 30, cent 30 centimeters, essentially, for this particular reactor device and configuration, uh, there was uh, only nominal um, uh, evidence of strange radiation. But he got the apparently coherent tracks, uh, which I attempted to give an explanation for in my presentation. Um, and uh, he also uh, got the zigzag tracks and he got the, the ones where each segment of a parallel track have, um, you know, almost like entangled damage to the material. Um, and obviously the, 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 the cut lines where it's dumping stuff behind it. Um, and he characterized all kinds of aspects at that presentation. It has been made public uh, and uh, uh, it's being translated right now so that uh, that will be out in English as soon as possible. Thank you to Max Nosen for offering to do that. Um, so, wow, wow, wow. Um, then uh, uh, a number of the presentations were in Russian and uh, I'm afraid I... I didn't get so much as I'd like out of them. Uh, however, there was a, a presentation on the problem of ball lightning rotation. And this guy was sitting in front of me. And uh, during my presentation, he went, yes, yeah, something like that. And uh, I thought, oh, uh, maybe I've said something that's useful. Um, and uh, uh, he, he then, uh, I, I realized when he gave his presentation that he was seeing things in his studies of ball lightning. Uh, that had corollaries or, or, or similarities to some of the things that I was saying. So that that, that was uh, quite satisfying from a sort of like a overview point of view. But um, uh, I'm going to uh, capture his uh, uh, and try and speak to him about his uh, poster uh, I th that I think is on a similar subject. 
Uh, so we, we, it was really uh, um, mostly on, on a schedule today uh, in terms of who was speaking. Uh, the next speaker was, uh, so that previous one was uh, A.V. Uh, Chris Dolinoff. And the next one was V.V. Botvinovsky. And it, he was looking at the detection of electric motive force generated by the plasma discharge gap. Again, I didn't really get so much out of that. Um, uh, there is the ab abstract, it's already been published. Um, but anyway, then uh, there's this chap called uh, Dan Gain A, and uh, he's saying exotic states of the hydrogen atom. And he actually referenced some uh, research uh, from the MFMP uh, that we conducted in California, an, uh, an experiment of Allen's. I don't know if you remember, there was an event where it looked like we were getting uh, some so 511 kev stuff when we were trying different shields on on the um uh the sodium iodide detector i i need to revisit that to find out if we we dismissed that i think we probably did but anyway this inspired him to uh, uh do a whole kind of study of uh relativistic states or there was a lot of discussion around his paper and relativistic states of electrons being making them at heavy electrons and bring them closer to the nucleus and and creating sort of a virtual neutron type uh, uh set up in like hydrogen anyway there, there, there seemed to be a lot of discussion around that now and again i wish i was be a, had a translator talking in my ear um uh, uh especially since they were referencing some of alan goldwater's work uh, but it does go to show that uh researchers are really paying attention uh, across borders and and across cultures and and so it, it is important that you share because it, it, it's it's a motivational force and i can't help thinking that you know um the uh, some of the intense investigation into strange radiation has, has come about uh in in part from uh what some of the uh uh, uh other russians are doing that 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 inspired me to look for these things and 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 other other researchers to look for these things and it's kind of a self-feeding cycle right now and when you see uh what Zhigolov has done he's he's really trying to characterize this thing so we're moving from a oh this is strange to now we're starting to understand it uh, and again um it's it's thin films and 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 changes of impedance uh, as we seem to observe with uh our studying uh um uh echo fuel that that seem to be able to capture this stuff so um uh uh the, the, the last uh, presentation was by uh, Philip Hatt, and I got a lot out of this because he speaks English. He's French, uh, uh, but he's a great guy. And it, he's got a nuclear uh, structure type um, way of representing material, looking at uh, uh, the bond uh, energies between like protons, neutrons, 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 protons, protons, etc. Um, uh, and it really uh, clearly it would seem that by arranging it in a certain way, which is a pattern that follows, um, you can end up by being able to easily uh, calculate uh, not only elemental uh, uh, energies, but also the energies of uh, uh, isotopes. So um, it was easy to follow, and uh, uh, it's quite, quite an interesting theory, and it got some good feedback from the people in the room. Um, so... Yeah, altogether, uh, uh, really, whilst exhausting day, um, uh, very, very satisfying. We we really are genuinely on the um, birth of a new science. Uh, and uh, uh, the added bonus in the evening was I sat down and Alexander Parkhamov came down uh, and he had the... <laughs> I asked him before, I said, do you have it? And he's like, no, 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 no. But then he came down and he, he had the uh, uh, main reactor tube from uh, the 225-day test. And he gave the MFMP a couple of samples, one of the felt fillers and, and two of uh, the um, uh, pieces of the reactor core and uh, 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 of the inner core. And wow. <laughs> I already had my Nerugu and my Samsung 7 and we popped it on there and literally in full view of everyone within one minute we found a zigzaggy strange radiation track that's cutting through um, the uh, reactor uh, uh, ceramic. So uh, I want to capture that when I've had a bit more sleep and, 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 and post it but uh, you know 
the, these uh, cheap, affordable tools, knowing that this is a real thing and, and uh, what to look for. Uh, I think it's, <laughs> and, and then I have to add the, the comment that if anyone is in any doubt that Alexander Parkamov has or has not got excess heat or that he's got transmutation, he doesn't matter. He's got strange radiation and they go together. So, you know, forget worrying about it. It's there. It's real. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, uh, how exciting. How exciting. Uh, so, um, you know, there was a lot of discussion about ways to create strange radiation again. Um, and so, uh, yeah, this is the birth of a new science and you guys have got front row seats uh thanks again for all those that support me uh and the mfmp and uh thanks also to my family for putting up with me coming away so much um so i uh i'm gonna get some sleep now uh, after i've uploaded this and uh, uh i shall see you tomorrow bye for now